They're always waiting for shipments of cloth from New England and mills in the south. Plus, they charge us extra for being west of the Rockies. Personally, I charge them at least triple for being so far off the map. The rest of the day crawled by. I wondered if work was always this depressing or just in the bathing suit business. At one point, Mr. Slebnack, who insisted I call him Wendell, asked if I'd care to examine the books. Oh, do you have a selection of popular titles? I would like. <laughs> I've been meaning to read On the Beach. <laughs> Say, if they make a movie out of it, perhaps we can get them to feature a few of our sexier designs. Ledger books, he, he replied, are business records. Would you care to look them over? Oh, maybe some other time, Wendell. By the way, how are we doing? Oh, well, sales were a bit disappointing this spring. It's possible people are staying away from the water because of the lingering polio scare. Somebody in a nearby office harumphed loudly. We have a very strong position in the marketplace, he went on. If you're a woman who weighs 300 pounds, Milady Modest is really your only viable beachwear option. I don't know, Wendell. If any of the girls I know weighed 300 pounds, I don't think they'd be planning any outings to the beach. <laughs> they'd be taking a cab to the nearest tall building for the purposes of hurling themselves <laughs> off the roof. Well, our styles do come in a variety of sizes, Mr. Moran. Call me Colm. We're very popular in your rural areas and smaller cities, although anyone with a problem figure is our target market. Our customers are rather conservative in their tastes. Another loud harumph. I was beginning to suspect there was some dissension in the ranks. At last, the clock rolled around to quitting time. Wendell locked up and gave me a lift in his aging Nash, Detroit's closest approximation to a bathtub on wheels. <coughs> Uncle Jonathan's house was one of those shingled bungalows like your grandparents may have dropped dead in. Dark paneling, heavy furniture strewn with crochet doilies, murky green roll-up blinds, and old-fashioned lamps giving off the feeblest glow. Good smells, though, emanated from the kitchen, where a girl about my age was stirring something in a pot. Who are you, I asked. I'm your housekeeper, she said, addressing the pot. I'm reheating yesterday's stew because you never showed up. There was a mix-up, sorry. You don't look like a housekeeper. She wasn't beautiful like Betty, but she was the best-looking girl I'd seen since arriving in this town. Somewhere between slim and shapely, with a perky nose and bob brown hair. And what do housekeeper, housekeepers look like, she asked, finally glancing my way. Her eyes were an arresting light hazel. Like Agnes Moorhead, that's usually who Hollywood picks, where they get some fat Negro woman if they're going for laughs. Well, you have to make do, do with me. My name's Jean Valan. I'll make dinner, but not breakfast or lunch. So you're on your own for that. I will also wash up, shop for groceries, do the laundry and vacuum. If you're not disgusting in your personal habits, I might also clean the bathroom. Any questions? What else don't you do? I'll leave that to your imagination. Have a seat in the dining room, and I'll bring in your dinner.